Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another SLG Meetup, your host Alvaro, to bring you another exciting, successful and interesting guest. Today we have with us Peggy Savakolas. She's a real estate broker in the Hamptons. You probably have seen her at the TV show Selling the Hamptons on HBO Max. Or if not, you probably have seen her in other appearances she has had on TV, such as Million Dollar Listing in New York or Million Dollar Beach House on Netflix. She's also been a commenter on Fox Business News talking about real estate. And overall, she's a superstar when it comes to luxury real estate in the Hamptons. So today, she's going to tell us all about that, her personal branding, and how she's able to manage to build such an incredible career. Hi. How are you, Peggy? Good. Good how you. are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. How are you? Are you back in the Hamptons? Uh, right now, I'm actually on Long Island. So I spent the majority of my summer in the Hamptons, but been all over the place. Well, I see that. And <laughs> I'm sure that it's been a fantastic summer because that's the season for you guys. So in fact, here in Miami, we see a lot of the people that live here that go back to the Hamptons and Long Island. So I'm sure you've been busy this I summer. I spent my summer last year in Palm Beach and it was the hottest summer I think you guys have ever had. I nearly died. Like I, I was playing, I learned how to play tennis there for the first time. It was, it was, it was a lot to say the least. I mean, look, there's a lot of things to do down here in South Florida, but definitely in the summer, uh, you might, you might consider visiting other places. And yeah. One of my favorite spots is definitely the Hamptons. So I'm glad that we're having this conversation because a lot of people might have seen you on Selling the Hamptons on HBO Max, or they might have seen you in the past on the other show, Million Dollar Beach House, or just on social media, following along your journey on showcasing some of the most incredible homes. So when you are talking about the Hamptons, you're not just showing the properties, you're showing the lifestyle that the Hamptons offers. And I feel that it is one of the most unique and extraordinary destinations in the world. Yeah, I so I, I love the Hamptons, and the reason why I love it is it's it's one of the it's one of the most like glamorous but also hidden treasures of New York, and I want to say the country. Um, you have some of the best beaches, like Cooper's Beach is always ranked as one of the top beaches in the country. You have these mega mansions, um, and everyone is very private in the sense that you don't know what goes on behind these hedges. It really is a hidden gem, just an hour outside of the world's best city, which is what I truly think. I'm not <laughs> No, it's definitely, it's definitely a, a great city. And the Hamptons in general, I believe that it offers such a magic escape for anybody that is either in the city or for anybody else around the world. So I like that TV shows like the ones that you are in is showcasing more about it because even though it's a very private and secluded place that people like it that way, I feel like now it's also opening up to a new demographic which before it was considered the old money, but even the real estate industry, the people that were running it, it was old money, old school people, but now it's coming this new generation of clientele, but also of brokers like you. I mean, I think if you ask the local brokers out East in the Hamptons, they're not going to be in favor of people like me coming in. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I was one of the first brokers that actually came from New York City to the Hamptons before before COVID hit. And it was really, really difficult to break that mark. You know, it's a very close knit family. It's a very close knit industry out East. Some of the uh, mechanisms or just the way they do things still stuck in the Jurassic times. And because there's a limited amount of a brokers and inventory, they didn't want, you know, New York City brokers coming in and taking taking their their homes so it was it was very 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 difficult for me to break in i literally was getting doors shut in my face so let's talk about all that because you were in law school and you traveled you did some other things prior to get more deep into real estate but once you decided okay i'm gonna go full in i'm gonna move to the hamptons i'm gonna do real estate there how did you penetrate that market because it's very difficult as you said well i never gave up my New York City business. Um, my New York City, so I just fortunately, I New York City slows down a little bit during the summer, and then that's when the Hamptons before the summer, that's when it really breaks through. Um, I, I, I'm a believer that you should always keep all your doors open, and there's always a way of expanding. Did I ever think when I was in law school I was gonna do real estate? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> but when certain things come your way, 
why not? You know, um, I have a lot as a great backup plan, but I knew that I wanted to make this a career for me. Um, and how I broke into the Hamptons, really, I just didn't really care what other people said. You know, I got a lot of doors slammed on my faces, a lot of, I had a top brokers not wanting me to show multi-million dollar homes because they didn't know who I was or they didn't take me seriously, but I just kept persevering. And that's pretty much what I've done my entire career. You know, I've had, I've had a lot of doors physically and like, just <laughs> like, um, figuratively shut in my face. And I just, kept going, you know, just gave me a little bit more motivation to just say, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to also take your listings. And <laughs> there you go. I mean, look, that's a great mindset to have, especially in this industry, but not everybody has that tough skin, right? I mean, I guess you develop it through experience and through a lot of those doors being uh, slammed on your face. But at the end of the day, there must be something that you're doing or that you might have done to develop that thick skin because some people are afraid of being rejected. So how do you overcome that? Fear? I have a Greek mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that says a lot. <laughs> no, um, you know, I, I look at life for, listen, if, if, if you can't, if you don't have a thick skin, then real estate's probably not the right avenue for you. Can you develop that thick skin for sure? Um, I've always, I grew up with an immigrant family. So I've always had the, mentality of just you have to get it done you know I, like um and as far as thick skin goes i kind of just use that no as as like power and motivation and a lot of times people underestimate me because i am a girl or you know i'm from new york and not a hamptons broker in the beginning and i use that as a superpower you know let them underestimate me because uh, they're under the radar but as far as like having a thick skin, my mother definitely helped with that, but uh, it's really, it's what your motivation, what your goal is. And if you have a passion for something, then that will be your motivation and that will thicken your skin up. Mm, that's right. So having that reason and that passion combined, it will create that, I will say, yeah. fuel to move forward. Now I've got to ask you because once you penetrate into that industry, once you're getting into it and you're like, all right, no matter what, I'm just going to be doing this and I'm just going to build myself a niche within the whole Hamptons industry. So how do you build yourself a brand and how do you get yourself known among all these other sharks? You make yourself known. No one's going to promote you. No one is going to, you know, establish you. Um, you, it's a lot of going out there and making yourself known and being the mayor of your town or, you know, telling everyone what you do as far as if you're in real estate, if you are a mom, join more mom groups. If you like, I started horseback riding, you know, because I also oh. found a passion for it, but that's a very Hamptons thing to do, you know, going out to more workout classes, but you just make it known. And my biggest thing is what I always say is when you do meet people, you always follow up you know, follow up is key. And my little trick is I don't like giving out my business cards or contact. I'd rather get theirs because you always want to have control. And then it's on you if you're going to respond. But it's really just mm -hmm. going out there, meeting people and socializing, especially in the beginning. Well, I like that. And the Hamptons is very social. So you definitely need to be out there. Nobody's going to go to your home and be like, hey, hi. <laughs> so <laughs> no, you got to oh, find those communities. Not. And I like that because a lot of people, we're in the people's business, right? So a lot of people connect with you, not just because of how good you are at something, but also because of similar passion, similar interests, similar communities, and that's how you build those relationships. So I guess that what you're saying, just to summarize it, is about getting yourself in front of the right people. The right people are those that you can connect with in different passions, in different areas that you might connect, and then develop a conversation that you can follow up upon. Right. And, you know, the Hamptons or in a lot of luxury industries can smell out salespeople, right? So it, it's not going to happen right away. You want to build that relationship first. You know, there. this past summer was the first, we didn't film this summer and I really got to enjoy the Hamptons and just network and, and not really network, but it was fun for me and it was casual. So I think just building that at first is really, really, really crucial for, for a lot. Cause there's, everyone knows a real estate broker, you know, everyone has so many friends, so they need to develop a trust with you. And that doesn't always necessarily mean being very like salesy, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I, I mean, we have some friends in common. I see you hanging out with 
some really cool, cool people. And you're always in the scene, in the known. People <laughs> see you that you're doing things. When it comes to referrals, right? Because you just said it right there. Everybody's gonna refer some sort of business to somebody. How do you become that top of mind? Is by always being in front of these people, doing your follow-ups or also utilizing social media so that people can re remember you? I think it's a combination. I think definitely being in front of people out of sight, out of mind is one thing for sure. But I think also being able to produce is another, you know, no one's going to refer you if, if you didn't produce on their property or something along those lines. I, the majority of my business is referral based or repeat clients. And I think that is a huge testament to the broker or the person that you are. And mm -hmm. I think aside of just, aside of just being on social media and constantly in front of people's faces, which is a huge part of it. Another aspect is being able to produce. And when you do have that listing, I don't care if that listing is $200,000 or $200 million, you have to put in your all and follow up even after it closes. Cause that is what the referral base is, right? right. You know, cause that $200,000 seller or buyer can turn into a 2 million or yeah. it can turn into five $200,000 sellers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just cons it's, it's a little bit of a combination of being in people's faces and being aware, like making sure that they're aware, but also backing it up with producing, you know, and, and building that relationship with clients. Mm -hmm. I always say my clients are, they start as clients but end as friends. I like that. I like that. That's a good thing. Now, how important was for you to join nest seekers or be part of a brokerage? Cause a lot of people, they don't know which direction to go. They feel like, oh, I built already a big brand. Now I can go on my own or they want to jump and go into a team. Like how important it was for you to do that move? Well, I was with the Nest Seekers. Nest Seekers is the only agency that I've worked for um, or worked mm -hmm. with. So I've been there for almost 15 years wow. now. Um, oh. I'm a very loyal 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 person. As far as figuring out the agency that you want to work for, it's it's not the grass isn't always green on greener on the other side it's green wherever you water it and it's not necessarily the Ooh, brokerage but also like but also like the broker themselves so if you're looking for different brokerages i think a lot of it has to do if you're new in the industry what kind of training and what kind of support they provide you and if you're seasoned if you're seasoned you have more flexibility as to what brokerage you go to it's just a matter of what they they can supply for you and how you guys can grow together, you know, in a way. Um, so I've been with Nest Seekers for not 15 years, but almost 15 years. Wow, and it's that's, a broker. that's amazing. Yeah. No, yeah, I, it's really I, the broker. I've seen that. I've seen that the evolution of the brokerage itself, but also you as a professional and having these TV shows now that went from million dollar beach house <laughs> to now they have selling the Hamptons. How, how much of an impact have that had on your business, being on TV? Well, fun fact, I used to work with Ryan Serhan. I was one of the first original team members. So I was also on Million Dollar Listing New York on Bravo. So I was all over the place. Wow. Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been, that's why people are familiar with your face. You've been all over the TV shows. Yeah. So how has that been for you, being on TV? I'm a very go with the flow type of person. Um, it's been great. You know, I think the most beautiful part of it is the impact I've had on certain people's lives. You know, I haven't, with being on TV, I not only can obviously promote and have a lot more eyes on my clients, but it's also on the personal aspect of it. A lot of newer agents or parents of teenagers or something along those lines DM me all the time and ask me, or are they like, you're doing great for like women in business or my daughter wants to start real estate for you. And like, they ask a bunch of questions. So that to me has probably been the most impactful um, on a personal side, on a professional side, you're going to have people that want to work with you and you're going to have people that not, are not going to want to work with you. Um, right. And because of the show and that's fine. You know, a lot of my clients don't want anything to do with the show and I respect that, but it's been great overall for, for the professional side and personal. Mm -hmm. Well, look, everybody that is looking from the outside is, oh my God, Peggy, she's killing it in the Hamptons, <laughs> living this amazing life, selling these incredible homes, TV, fame. How, because everybody, you know, as you mentioned, they might seem that everything is greener on the other side, but how have you handled the difficult situations? Like what was, walk me through a moment that it was painful that you were able to overcome. 
Uh, I had a very, very difficult time after Million Dollar Beach House. Um, and when you are in the eyes of so many different people, I think it doesn't, I think you just kind of have to just truck along. Um, and you're going to, you're never, you're never going to be able to make everyone happy. You know, when you're in, when you're in the spotlight, not that I'm in the spotlight, but when I have views on me, whether it's social media or on TV, I'm never going to make everyone happy. And as long as I am true to myself or you follow your true north, you can't really fault that. So mm. in any difficult situation that I've been in, I've always said, am I true? Am I being true to who I am? Am I am i proud of my actions if i'm not proud of my actions how can i better them um and then if i'm falling off of who i really am at, as my core how do i get myself back on there but the spotlight's a very interesting thing so i always just try to stay grounded and be true to who i am and i have some friends that definitely like smack me around and say peggy like you're being annoying on on your instagram stories or whatever but it's <laughs> it is what it is I like what you mentioned about staying grounded, right? Because it's a very flashy industry. Everything is glamorous. Everything is very bling bling. You're having access to some of the most incredible homes, working with some of the most wealthy people. And at the end of the day, this might detach you from reality and who you are really. I just had a conversation two days ago with Luis, who was probably with you on Million Dollar yeah. Listing in New York. I know Luis and his brother and well. He had had a completely different transformation, right? From being in the spotlight to all of a sudden living in with his parents and having nothing and just focusing on a new dream. And that's okay. He's been true to himself and he found happiness, right? So sometimes what you said about being on the spotlight, it makes you want to have different expectations from yourself than from what you really want. So how do you keep that true north? How do you stay co committed to really what matters to you instead of just chasing what other people might expect from you? That's a really good question. And I think if anyone really answers that like hardcore, they're not fully there yet. Um, I think it's an ongoing process. I think it's so easy to fall into the world that you are in. I mean, I grew up with immigrant parents, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. accustomed to these multi-million dollar homes with people spending a half a million dollars for one month to rent a house and and their staff coming in for the first week to set it up and then they're only spending a week in the home mm -hmm. you know like i'm not i'm not accustomed to that but i think it goes back to just always reminding your core circle you know yes there's glitz and glams and i go to all these fancy and fabulous events but my core circle of people are are very real and you know, when the cameras and lights are all gone or we're out of these events, we, I mean, I sit on the floor in my friend's kitchen house all the time and we just hang out and I get made fun of, you know, I think it's having your core circle of people that will support you and not falling into the trap of the glitz and glam that is so easy to fall into. And, you know, again, it's going back to staying to who you are and your true north. I I love that, by the way. This is a great statement and a good reminder for everybody, especially in this industry. So with yeah, that being I... said, no, no, carry on, please. No, and I was saying, I don't know if there's any like new agents out there. If you're joining real estate for the glitz and glam, it's, it's not glitz and glam. There are many times when I am on all fours cleaning the floor, you know, and I'm not necessarily wearing sparkles to open houses. You know, I'm wearing normal clothing. So it's, it's a lot more humble than, hey, than you guys all yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure of that. It's about being vulnerable, but also being true to yourself and being able to surround yourself with that core circle that you were talking about. It's a good analogy and a good way to put it. So I'm glad you, you share that. And I always ask a question to all of our guests. And again, it varies, varies mm -hmm. from, from person to person. But what is really luxury to you? Uh luxury for me is the ability to do what makes you happy mm. and if that's sitting home and family time or going to be able to travel whenever you want that's luxury to me it's not the materialistic amenities that all these homes have luxury to me is the ability to afford your own happiness and in, in whatever way that is to you i love <laughs> for me it was this summer going to greece and have a greek salad <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that. that's amazing how is yeah. greece no I great mean, yeah. no I, I i i always go every summer i go to mykonos primarily but also santorini athens so this summer was beautiful and okay. 
I'm sure that you having roots in Greece and having your family from there, you go a lot. Yeah, um, I grew up going to Greece in the summer, every summer. So now I try to go every two years. Okay, fa yeah. fantastic. Well, look, there's always opportunities to expand, right? While you do what always. you love. Always. If you could tell your younger version or your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, be okay with saying no to things um, and always go after what you want regardless of what uh, anyone else thinks, as long as it makes you happy, just do it. I, I love that. And it's such a complicated thing, right? To remind even ourselves today yeah. as an adult version to keep saying no to things because no is what will help us be able to say more yes to yeah. the things that matter. We are just pleasing people that when you say yes to things and things to really don't do nothing for us. So I like yeah. that a lot. I'm a big people pleaser and it was, it's a big, it's a big, uh, learning curve to start saying no to people and, you know, absorbing my inner energy and inner peace for myself to be better overall in general. So I like that, right? Because as humans, we want to be open to opportunities. And you were talking previously about being passionate about things and passions comes from being curious and curiosity comes to saying yes to things, right? So when you're being open-minded and saying yes to things, it's great for a period of time or at least for a section of your life. But if you keep saying yes to everything, then you're going to be deluded from focusing on the things that really matter. And energy is something that we got to be able to harness in the most yeah. uh, amazing yeah. way. So I, I like that. But in either way, I think that your conversation is an inspiration for many just because you were able to go all the way from New York to the Hamptons, penetrate a really difficult niche and make yourself a brand for yourself. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but being on TV and selling some incredible homes. So can't wait to go and, and see what you guys have going on in there. I know you're going to West Palm a lot, but if you're coming down a little bit farther here to Miami, we'll be more than happy to welcome you. I know we have some friends here as well. Yeah. So again, Peggy, for, sure. for anybody that wants to reach out to you, wants to work with you, where can they find you best? Uh, social media is great. So Instagram, Peggy double underscore Z. Um, and if you need my contact, as far as email goes, just PeggyZ.com is really the best. Um, but Instagram is Instagram and email. All right. And any news on what's going to be next on selling the Hamptons? Uh, stay tuned for all that fun stuff, but I'm also expanding to Florida soon too. So Ooh. there's some news uh, that I can't say just yet, but, uh, there's definitely some big news coming up soon. Well, can we? to hear all about it so thanks again peggy i appreciate you and we'll stay in touch thank you for sure it's so, such a pleasure